Ooh, I spot a mistake. Ah, you dummy. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome to episode 17. It's still going. Okay, uh, we've got a bit of a laundry list to go. If you look up here, yeah, it's at... Oh, there's actually way more than I thought there was gonna be. But we've got some functional things we've gotta do. This place I'm working in is a mess. I've gotta tidy it up. I'm gonna put the machine into its cage. The work that I'm gonna be doing further from here, I believe I can do in the cage. So let's get the place looking a little bit better. This machine is in a good place. Let's get it tidied up. So the first thing I needed to do was actually dismantle the machine and unplug all the ribbon cables so that I could then reattach each box back when it's inside the rack. Of course, I had to tidy up a lot of the existing cables and whatnot. Oh, hi, Steve. Yeah. You're right, I'm about to put the whole thing together. How did you know? And by the way, thank you again without you, none of this would be happening. Thank you, brother. Cheers. Now, Steve Rance there. So with the digital card in place, it was now time to put the analog cage around the back. Now, some people like this to be up front and give all the fair lightiness, but it's just way more functional and way more space saving if it's at the back. I do have to look into if it's gonna get too hot back there though. Hmm. It's in. <laughs> this is a, a monumental moment. Cheers, everyone. There it is. You notice also a nice little addition there. The USB interface. <laughs> Look. Ah. <laughs> oh man. I'll, I'll get used to this and I'll be I'll be more normal in a bit. But right now I am not normal. Just want to say seriously, from the bottom of my heart, Steve Rance, thank you for allowing this project to happen, because without you, this project would not be a reality. Thanks again. Okay, so we've now got the CMI inside the rolling case, which is great. Um, and it's good that it's rolling, because it allowed me to roll it into a different place and really kind of reorganize this area. Now, the way it was before was pretty bad, as you may have remembered. It just was like the boiling of the frog. I didn't realize how bad it had become. The keyboard was in one place, the screen was in another, and then the CMI I was working on, it was just an absolute mess. So now that I've got it in the, case, in the, in the rack, I've now moved it into a better position for me to actually work and do more projects in my little layer here. So um, I've got my uh, laptop here for when I'm doing my uh, 3D cutting and etching, and um, that's not usually there, so when I'm doing my, my electronic stuff, that's there. And then I've got my little microscope for doing when I'm doing soldering. And then what we have here is the actual setup. It's much more workable here. Now it's not perfect or anything, but it's still a work in progress. But what it allows me to do is have my CMI monitor there, my uh, MFX, <laughs> whoa, monitor there. And uh, the outputs of the Fairlight are going into the inputs of the MFX. Um, I have t tested syncing before and that's great, but I've now got to redo all that here and make sure everything's working. Now, what we have got to do tonight is we noticed in one of the other videos that this lovely little box, uh, which I was built, was made, I believe it was built by Andre, I think he put them together, but it was Joe Britt's um, uh, conception um, of having this USB to CMI. And it's fantastic, it works like a champ. But what I noticed when I tried to do the RS tests is that the uh, when you do shift left right, it doesn't move the timeline. Okay, so this is just to quickly show you what I'm talking about. If I go to F11, um, so at, so if I see 11 
Oops, 10 switches that one off, which is fine. 11 pauses it, as you can see there, look, like this. But then if I go to um, stop, if I go to play on 15, it doesn't do anything. So those keys don't work. Does this key work? No. So 13, 14, 15, they, those don't work. Then this here with the, 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 the timeline, if I usually go control left and right, but it doesn't, it doesn't move it. So I contacted Andre and he contacted Joe Britt and it was miraculous. Within 24 hours, it was like the Amazon Prime delivery of updates. Um, I had new code and Andre sent me a video to show me that it worked and it works. So now I've got to download, take this apart, um, take out the Teensy controller and the Teensy controller's got a little um, USB jack on it and then um, download the Teensy firmware updater and put the new firmware on it and then test it and see if we'll get it going. Right, let's do it. Oh, I see the Teensy controller right there. Oh, it's cute. Oh, look at that. How cute is that? It's adorable. So apparently I take this chip out and plug it in and download the controller. Okay, it's connected. So now let's just run the software. Open. Nope. Okay, let's try this one. This is the charger for my cat's GPS. Let's try this one here. I heard the sound. Okay, I'm now gonna run Teensy and see if this works. Press Teensy button to manually enter, uh, enter program. Let's see. Hey, we have a thing. Okay, cool, cool. This is good. All right, so now I go and grab the file, open hex file and desktop, and let's go down to that one there. Open, bonk, and then this one is program reboot. Let's program. What's this one do? What's my, I don't know, program, bonk. Download complete, that's it? What? Reboot. Reboot, okay. What does that mean? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. But this thing just got rebooted with a wee program. I'm unplugging you. Wow, let's do it. Okay. Seems to be on. All right, here we go. Let's try it out. If this works, this means it's working. Yep. All right, this means it's working. Something has been downloaded, or maybe it's the old version and it didn't download. We don't know. So we just now, we have to wait. Let's put into Fairlight mode, bye bye, and let's um, get RS working and we'll see if, if everything else is working. All right. Oh, I should switch on the other MFX so that we can even hear, oh, there we go. So we can hear with, if the output, because the output from the Fairlight is going through the MFX. I need the MFX to be on so we can hear if it's working. Okay, I've gone into RS. I'm gonna load uh, CMI, called CMI4. Which is weird. I'm gonna hold down. Do these work? They do. Pattern 11. Oops, pattern 11. All right, this is the test. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and move the thingy back and forward. Oh, yes! Oh, it works. That's brilliant. So there we go. If I go left and right, you can see the timeline moving back and forward. Now, here's the thing if I press play, which should be F. Uh, 15. Yes! It's working. So let's just, just make sure that everything's going fine. Press F14 to stop. F15 to play. F13 to record. Yeah. F11 to pause. It works like a champ. So, um, thank you to Andre who and put it up the flagpole to Joe Britt and Joe Britt who fixed it within 24 hours. It works perfectly. So now I do not need the MFX keyboard over there at all. I am now completely, oh, does this work? Yeah, the mouse works, the keyboard works. Oh, I want to test something, hang on. Let's go to SC. And I want to put this to, let's say I'm going to set this to D. I go D and then page down. Oh, it works. You know what that is? 
because I read the instructions. I've been going around looking for all the different various keyboard combinations. Turned out all I needed to do was go to the website and read it there. So I only have a 24 channel desk down here. And so that's not enough channels to have the CMI and the MFX coming in. So that's why I routed everything from the CMI through the MFX so that I could basically have enough channels. A lot more work, but hey, <laughs> I don't have unlimited space. I got a lot of things I could be doing. I'm procrastinating. But one of the things I really want to get is to synchronize the MFX and the CMI together. So let's have a little bit of fun. So these two huge plugs, <laughs> they kind of come down and go into the back of the Fairlight. We've got a lot of plugs down there that are not used right now. But the first ones that we are using are these ones that come back straight out the Fairlight and then go into the inputs of the MFX. I should really use the light here, but... Oh. Let's switch the fair light back on. Boom. And let's enable the tracks so that we can hear them on the, um, on the MFX. All right. Isn't this wonderful, by the way? <laughs> we've got the CMI in the bottom, and we've got the fair light in the top there. It's kind of special. So now what we want to do is um, um, make it so that it is open on the tracks that we're putting out. So I go to um, arm input. The hard drive is having a real bad problem. Hear that noise? You may have just witnessed the end of that drive. Shit. <laughs> All right. So I now need a, a new drive and a new image to, to get that going. Oh man. <laughs> it never ends. Okay. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> I'm going to switch it up and start again. Damn, that's probably really bad. Attempting to boot from Turbo Skizzy Disk. Okay, it's booting. Fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and arm the tracks. That means I'll hold down arm. Oops. Oh my goodness. Arm, and I'm going to switch on all these tracks, and then there's just 10 tracks. Okay, and I can look at the inputs to see if the, oh dear. There we go, and you can see it's one to 10, which is the inputs, which is fine. Boom, I go back to arm, and then I know that I need to start the jet to generate the time code. And then um, if I go um, P1, just to put it back at the beginning, and it's got no code, and the last time it saw code was at 23.59.23, so, if I go play, oops, stop, play, it's now waiting for code, right? So if I was going to go play here, and I shimmy on back a little bit to 59.05, you can see it's, it's actually not doing it yet. So if I press play now, now it's coming up, and it's outputting. Oh, 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 so now... So I need to go to monitor source. Okay, so let's go back to um, before. So it's gonna cut in at, at zero, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is press record and then play, bonk. Now it's gonna come in at there. And it does exactly at zero. Let me see if we get a close up of that. If I press stop now, that's cool. And now I can go monitor track. So now when I come back, I can switch off arm so that all these tracks are just gonna go back to play. So now I press play. That's actually now, what you're hearing now is the actual 
if I zoom in. Exactly at zero. I'm going closer. Isn't that great? If you can see what I'm doing there, it's great fun. I'm doing this. Now let me see if I can show you there. What's also funny is that this thing is catching up on tempo too. So if I'm going to go back to that play, if I press play, this is going to catch up to it too. It's going to be completely insane. So that's actually playing it, we just can't hear it. I wonder if I would halfway, can I, can I switch to source halfway through? Let's see. Yep, that's source. And that's the actual audio. So it's really, really, it's basically exactly the same my light went off, of course. Okay, so that's cool. So what we've got is, um, that's showing that we can record um, in perfect time code on the, on the Fairlight CMI, record it on the MFX, and uh, play it back on the MFX on track, go back and play it. Isn't that great? There you go. So, um, we am now at a stage now. I am uh, about to have tried uh, loading and saving voices uh, through Translator. Having a few technical issues in that, but one of the things I am trying is I'm trying to pop cards in and out. And that brings me to this next tricky part. And the tricky part is, um, it's difficult to get my hand in to then fertile around. And in, there's been two cases that have dropped the card inside the machine and I had to fish it out with another tool. So what I've done is, I've got the, um, I copied Peter. <laughs> uh, Peter had one of these SD card extender things and this goes to micro SD and then I just added a little, you know, little adapter card in there and popped it in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, find a little place for this to live on the inside and fertile this card around and make it all nice. Try to figure out if I, if I use the little, um, I think I might, there's a little piece of uh, Velcro that I could put on the bottom here it could live on the back so that all I do is open up the door a little bit and then pop the card out. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Yes, let's do it. Look how nice this will be. This is like 64 gigs and then you... Oh. Click, click. Nice. Right there. That'll be cute. In good old black technology's way. I'm gonna go for it. Satisfying click. All right, here we go. Hey, of course it's going to work first time. So now I'm going to pop this in here. Click. This goes down there like that. You might find something to stick that with. This goes in here like these. And let's see what happens now. Hopefully that means not me not breaking the door latch. Okay, so far so good. Boom, it's working. So we've got our CMI syncing, great. 
We've got the keyboard working on the MFX, fantastic. But of course, it's never ending. There's more. It is hot. I've once again broken off the hinges. This is just being held in by, by sheer love. <laughs> and um, so I'm gonna be taking this out. on it and see what it's like. I'm not gonna say too much here, but let's just call these plates in the spirit of Iron Man Mark I. At the beginning of all this, um, I realized that there was a drive to kind of use as much of the Fairlight as possible, which is great. And I'm, I'm glad that I went down that road. Felt like the Mark I from, from Tony Stark. But now, this may or may not be right, and I'm gonna have to look at it when I compare it against the, the real thing. But let's see what these things look like. Could be interesting, who knows? Ooh. Okay, I have no idea. Guys, hey, look at this though. <laughs> Ooh, this is exciting. Wow, okay. That's it. Wow, this is exciting. I guess the only thing is, let's see if this, if this A fits and, and B is the right size. This is interesting. What? Look at this. Backwards. All right, these are very heavy. Oof. Let's go see what this looks like. What a mistake! What? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Oh wow! Huh? Was this in my original file? How did I fuck this up? <laughs> I have fucked it up. There's no doubt about it. Okay, that was a silly mistake, and I won't make that mistake again, will I? Anyhow, I've ordered new plates. Let's call these the Mark II. Some plates, boom. And uh, <laughs> look at these, look at this. Oh, hang on, I need a bear. No, hang on, how do I do this? There you go. Okay, quick one. I'm assuming I made mistakes here, but I might not have. Well, I might not have made measuring mistakes. I did all this on my computer, so I, I, when I drilled this, I was doing it exactly to the actual circuit board. Um, and I've looked at this and I, I, I think some of my sizes might be a little bit off, but I will be able to drill them out. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is take this one plate and see if at least um, the, circuit boards, uh, the circuit board in the back fits. I made these and they really were designed for a thicker panel. I wonder if this would fit on here. Yes, it would. Wow, it would fit really well, actually. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God, it's just, I don't even want to do it because the, 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 the springs will click in, but look how clean that is. It's just fitting on some, look, perfect. Oh, that's lovely. All right, let's take off this circuit board and see what it looks like. I'm feeling I'm gonna be drilling some of this out. Okay, here we are with, with panel. Let's see what this will feel like. It's almost a little bit too, it's almost like a little bit too, it is almost too short. And also I can compare it against the, the actual real one. So what we have established 
go and revisit my numbers to see if I was right or not. Now what I want to do is I'm going to line them up right now and see the differences. This is where we'll really see. This one is, is perfect. The, the whole spacing exactly bang on. Ah, you can see I, one of my measurements I got wrong here. Look, the rest all lines up actually, pretty much, pretty good. But this is actually wrong, it's actually wrong. Okay, strike two. I'm kind of amazed that my measurements are this far off. It's almost like, I don't know, something else is offsetting them? Hmm. All right, so, me and the ever-evolving changes of design of, of these little things, we've not been best friends. <sighs> I've broken about six sets. Not six, six sets, because when I put them in my laser, in my um, resin printer, my 3D printer, I was putting them like that. They were going up like that, so they're very easy to snap that away. Um, but I also noticed that something else that I did flat on my printer was this, and it's a, it's so damn strong, but it is bigger. But I've noticed that it's a different material, and I'm thinking two things. I'm thinking one. One um, possible answer is the resin that I'm using isn't as strong as this other resin I was using at the time did that, that's one. But what I'm doing now is, and here's the other thing, is uh, I'm trying to um, do them at an angle which wouldn't allow them to shear so easily. So what I'm doing, first of all, is I'm doing them like this, then I'm doing them at an angle and at like this. So they're actually being printed out this funny angle like that. And um, they do feel a lot stronger. All right, whilst it's probably a good thing that I figured this out, it's a bad thing that it's taken me this long and like just repeatedly doing the same thing again and again. Hmm, this might answer many things in my life. Um, all right. Okay, so the only proper and decent and honest thing to be done now, it now makes sense to properly make this into a real plate. Let's do it. A real plate that won't break hinges. And it might even have a chance of being too short, but we'll see. Look at that, it's a straight as a thing, that's straight. That is much nicer looking. Wow, it's really nicely clean. That's what it should have been like in the first place. Look at that, ooh, nice. Look at that, beautiful. 3D printed. I don't know if you can hear that creaking in the background, but it's not a dying triceratops. Well, there is a dying triceratops, but it's not making a noise right now. That's the, the 3D printed needs a lubrication. Oh, they slide on with like friction. And they click in a place. So, I'm not gonna do it right now. I know they're going to work. I can feel it. The whole thing is so solid. Lovely. So these are the guys for me. But it's all a bit preemptive because, because I put this on backwards. Is that why it's preemptive? Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let's remove the whole thing and flip the whole thing over and start again. Ah, you dummy. All right, I now have a panel with one of the new groovy ones, which is all sanded down and nice, and one of the old ones, which is from the old layer base, you know, the, the different orientation, which makes it much weaker. But it's a shorter panel, let's see if it clicks in. All right. It is indeed too short. All right, so we're gonna be redesigning these anyway. You're already out of date, mate. Ah. Too short, how the f ah. did that happen? I wonder if the original ones were too short too. Right, now, so, the new design that I've just thought in my head is gonna fix all of this. It's gonna be a slot, it's gonna be so much easier. Let's see what happens here. 
door just goes up like that. That's it. It's done. Interesting, this door being a little bit shorter isn't going to be a problem for this. Look at that. That's great. Bonk. There's no stress on this. Could actually go... It's got a little bit of play in it, which is fine. Oh, this is great. I actually have no problem with these boards being a little bit short. They're totally fine as is. Okay. I'm going to try those things. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to get them. I have the springs in here. I have the whole thing ready. It is good to go. Let's just see what happens. I'm putting the spring in. This goes in. It's sliding in so nicely. Oh! <laughs> this one here. Let's put this one in here. Let's see what it's like. It slides with a good amount of friction and then, then it's in. All right, here we go. Are you seeing this? Are you recording? I'm closing and I'm using the latches and... Oh, are they at the wrong height? Well, that's interesting. That's odd, they're in the wrong place. That was slightly unsatisfying. I mean, the, it, these are working perfectly now. They're like the originals, but weirdly not close enough. Measurement number three that's wrong. Nope, your individual measurements were actually fine. Hi, future Chris here. Okay, I was kicking myself because I was really feeling that I'd done all the measurements again and again and I thought they were bang on. So it was really driving me bats to see error upon error time after time and it's expensive. You have to order these plates and then you have to wait for them and I was really kicking myself. Just popped out the bottom one. Whoops, a daisy. Stop breaking things. Okay. But that's it. I mean, it would fall out. Huh. Oh, so many small things. Why can't I leave anything alone? Of course. Um, I was dealing with the fact that the realizing the plate was too small and figuring out what was all adding up to making that not work. But then I realized the top latches were just a little bit loose. So I decided to use an older incarnation that was a lot tighter and slipped that on just to see what it was like. This one is like way too tight. Did I just break that? I did! Look! I just broke that! Whilst I'm trying to get this one on, I broke that one. Good lord. So the mistake is completely mine. When I made this file in, in Infinity Designer and then uploaded it, I didn't specify my size correctly inside Infinity Designer. It's my fault. I should have done that. So when I loaded it up into Oshkut, I had to scale it and make the size right. And then I realized that there were some errors, some kind of rounding errors, and I was scaling the thing wrong to get to the correct size. And um, when I picked everything else and went through all the metal work, it was great. But basically, my fault. When it arrived, it was the wrong size. It was giving me errors saying, your holes are too small and stuff like that. And it was completely correct. So once I figured it out, then I got the proper size <clears throat> and everything worked. Okay, so. I got these new plates from Oshkut. Everything just just fits perfectly. And I've got the redesigned um, back end on this that allows me to move them in and out to get them in and out easier. And then um, everything just looks great. Now, the only thing I haven't tested is I've now got to get this uh, to see if the circuit board fits. Wow. Um, I think that's a resounding yes. <laughs> they just go right in. All the LEDs are through. Wow. This LED needs to be pulled down a little bit. Oh, yes. <laughs> now they're poking all the way through properly. Look at that. Oshka. Yes. Very good. It's online service. You just basically um, send the DXF or the um, AI or SWG file to them. Even PDF, I think they take. And then, uh, that's it. Wow. Let's get the screws on it and um, see how it fits in the machine. Bam, look at that.
All right, here's the door closing. Wow, all right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. okay, there's confirmation right there. It just totally clicked into place. All right, let's tighten up these guys down here. Wow, 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 wow. This is now properly real. All right, door's in. Does the door open? It does. This needs to come out a little bit. I see. Luckily, I have that ability. As I built it into the thingy to allow it to happen. Okay. Open. And close. Oh, there we go. That's it. That door is perfect, though. No compromises, no nothing. It's just now a proper door. Okay, so we've now got that plate the right size. And so the next step would be, would be to actually now paint it and mark it and laser it. Hmm? Oh, what's that noise? Oh, that's procrastination. play that back so I can remember it. Alexa, play Pet Shop Boys. It couldn't happen here. It couldn't happen here by Pet Shop Boys on Amazon Music. Alexa, stop. Ooh! Wonder where that's from? Huh? Ha <laughs> ha Hey, not bad. Got the shots coming in on the MFX. And we've got the uh, fair light there. And it even says when you press, uh, when you press stop and you press, it even says, it's got in, oh, didn't write it there. R intro. And then they'll say verse and chorus and all that kind of stuff. Mmm! I didn't make it. But I know who did. Alrighty. That was fun, I got a lot more done than I thought it would. We got the CMI actually in the rack and working and all going together properly. It sounds great, doesn't make much noise at all, fantastic. We reprogrammed the Teensy so that it would work properly so that all the keys now properly fully work, which is fantastic. I now don't really need the MFX keyboard. I can leave that connected to the MFX properly, fantastic. Um, I got a little add-on extension cable so I can easily open up the door and pop in different SD card images of different versions of the CMI software. Um, and then we also did the Mark 1 and the Mark 2 and the Mark 3 plates of the front door so that we can actually have a proper front door. Fantastic. Next up, we have got a bunch of RAM we've got to get in there. Right now, I'm running on four megabytes, which means I can't really load anything and do any actual work on this machine. Also, I only have five voice cards at the back, which give me 10 voices. Five voice cards, um, and one of them is not actually working properly. But anyhow, I need, I need 16 voices to make it a full CMI. So I need another three cards. I'm working with Peter on that. And then with these new channel cards that are coming, guess what? They don't have any back plates on them. They're naked. So I have to also design the 331 back plates, get the graphics done, laser them, cut them, and cut holes and make the whole things out of pieces of aluminum or aluminium. Oh no, I said it wrong first. <laughs> but that also corresponds to that I also need some more digital cards, the channel cards at the front. Right now I've only got five and I need eight. I got to paint and laser the front panel, get that finished off. Will it be all plug and play? No, no, it never is, you know. If you've been here long enough, you'll know that nothing is plug and play. Lots, lots more things to do. All right, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.